The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Tom Dubik from Charlotte Land School and Young Engineers of Today. And I'm here to talk about the Pro Gamer event at North Carolina Science Olympiad. I'm a teacher. I've been doing this for 33 years and teaching engineering much of those 33 years, probably 31 of those 33 years. So um, welcome. If you can hear me, raise your hands. All right. I've got one, I've got a couple hands up. If you can hear me, raise your hands. All right. Excellent. Um, Aaron, Chris, leave your hands up. That way I know if you've got them. Heather, Kellen, Megan, Nicole, or Nicole, I'm never quite sure. Some people pronounce it different ways. Your hands aren't up. Can you hear me? Some are going up here. I'm going to send out this chat. All right, I'm in kind of a strange message, but I'm going to say, if you can't hear me, ask me a question. I've just set that on the chat. The hands are over here on this controls panel on your side. I just put everybody's hands down, and that's fine. All right. Um, the, what I'm going to do in this webinar is, again, for folks that may have not been to any of them yet, don't worry, you don't need to have been. For some of those who have, it's going to be a little bit of repetition in terms of we're going to talk about the contest answer some questions, but then today I will sit and work on um, going through a basic pawn game or just making sure you understand how different things work in this game. All right? All right. All right. Let me go under questions. I'm going to see if anybody asked any. I can hear you good. I'm not sure if I had my hand up. I can hear you good. Hi, Harold. I can hear you good. So everybody can hear me great. So let's get started here. So this is back the original first time we did this. It was it 2018? It was three years ago. Here it is. This will be going on when your kids go do the competition. They will see Floppy Wolf. They'll see something like this. It won't be this. It will not be this game. That I can assure you. But it'll be something. And it will just keep looping over and over again to show them what we mean. And then we are going to give them the steps to say, we need you to build this, then this, and each step to making this game. We do this because we think it makes more sense than me on the fly. Yeah guessing what is a great game. I think you get in a really kind of uh, a strange world of what can be subjective sometimes, depending on the program. So I've got that. Um, so what will happen in something like that as I'm bringing it up here, It'll ask, you know, what class, group you're in, the class, all the things we would love to see that. Go ahead and pull down. Then what it does is we tell you tasks. So in this case, second background, purple two, five, you should appear at the start of the game. We do try to start off with some simple tasks in the beginning, and they get more complicated. And if during the event your kids can't do all the tasks, they can skip them. We try to start off easier, too, so nobody gets in tears. We don't want that. Then, on the score sheet, wherever it's yellow, they write down the time, but they just check off when you've done something. And you just raise your hand when you get the yellow points, so that way the person, our folks can get to wherever they're going, the judges can get to it in time to write a time down. We have the times to break ties. All right. I'm going to go over and look in questions here. Okay, Alan, I got it. Great. So that's bottom line, basic of the game. Here are the steps. 
and then you the kids raise their hands once they complete it. We will provide the sprites. You do not have to worry about my kid can't draw a tree. How in the world is going to compete in this? Uh, neither can I, by the way. So we provide the sprites. They'll just use that. Okay, so make sure um, you remind your, your teammates that you should want to keep doing it. Okay, I'm going to put everybody's hands down. If you put your hand up now, that tells me that you have a question. All right, so someone has a question here. All right. Majumadar, 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 I hope I make sense. What's your question? Let me unmute you. Sir, what is your question? Uh, do you have to make a title page? It's whatever you'll see in the game. I, You will find out when you get to the game. All right? Okay. No problems. Good question to ask. I won't tell you anything that you're going to have to make. That would give an unfair advantage to the people at this webinar. Not everybody gets to come to the webinar. All right. Anybody else have a question? Any questions about the contest itself? Okay, no, Alan. Yes, Alan. Hey, Alan, do you have a question? Alan, do you um, have a question? Yes. Yeah, I was going to ask, um, could you also use this program, like, just like, is it only this program that you're doing right now? Can you only also do it for yourself, like, for fun? You mean, can you do Scratch by yourself just for fun? No, like this, um, the scratch thing you're doing right now. I know, like, like, um, the scratch thing you're going to do. The scratch thing I'm going, I, I'm you're not, if you want to just do a Flappy Birds game, yes, there's no problem there. Okay. That's fine. I'm trying to figure out. All right. Okay, now I'm going to mute you there, Alan. So you're welcome to make whatever you would want. It's, I, you know, the rule I have in my lab is you can, students can play any computer game they want as long as they make it. They build a lot of scratch, absolutely. But I think what you'll find, students and, I, and the teachers, that the kids, once they start getting into their game, they really would rather work on making the game. Get other people to play to see them improve it. All right. Any other questions? All right. So the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to go into Scratch. I'm just going to go through a real quick review with everybody on the different parts of Scratch. I have a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint, if you want, if you look at handouts here, um, it's an updated PowerPoint. It's downloading right here, so I can even bring it up so you can see it. Okay, it's going to come up in a minute. All right, but let's go ahead. So if you download it, you can use it right there. So under handouts, you'll see it. But what I want you to see, this is where the cat's going around. Off to the right here. Here is where you get information about the sprite. I'm going to change it to kitty. We don't like generic names. You want to, these are all sprites. You want to know, well, that's a kitty, so we're good there. Over here, here's where we write all our code. That's the most important thing. Costumes is how the cat can look. If you notice the cat's different, it's two different costumes. We're going to get to that in a minute. And then sounds. Don't worry a lot about sounds. Well, I don't know what the place you go to is even going to have them. And I'm not, I think the sounds will be distracting. I wouldn't worry about that. All right, let me also, so that's a layout there. Now I'm going to ask you all a question in a minute. Let me see if I'm going over here to see if there's any other questions. No. Nope. All right, now. Um, as we get started here, 
we'll just go over some simple stuff that leads on to it. So just remember, there are events that cause the code to happen. So I'm going to say, here's my sprite. All this code is for this cat right now. Another sprite, I've assigned code to them. It's moved 10 steps whenever flag is clicked. Okay? So whenever this flag is clicked, the cat will move 10 steps. See? Kick the flag, 10 step it. Let me check and see if there's no other questions there. Can I get you all to do that? Move the cat. We'll go over here. It moves 10 steps. All right? You know, so can I get you to do that? Get it to move 10 steps. All right? So, again, you just go over here. And then what gives you a tip off of what things do, motion is in blue. Looks, which is say hello. So watch this. If I say hello, watch what the cat does. Hello, waits two seconds, and then moves 10 steps, which isn't very far 10 steps. I will grant you that. All right? But that is, but I also can switch a costume. In this case, watch this. Hello, he moves. You know, and you can see his little legs going there. And you can do move 10 more steps. Hello, move, switch the costume and move again. That was so fast you can hardly see it, right? Wait a minute. Here it goes. Hmm. How do we see that? So sometimes we even need this. Under controls is another command. Let's do this. Hello. Move and moved again. This is a first concept. And if you switch these, the order matters. If I take this down and it says hello and then moves. Watch. It says hello, then moves. So he moves 10 steps, says hello. Waits a second, then says hello, waits three seconds. So the order all matters. Okay. So let's get everybody. I'm going to go to back to survey here. Raise your hand, do that, and then raise your hand once you've done it. I'm going to just go through. We'll go through and build this ourselves, folks. All right. I'll... I'm going to give you enough, if folks, enough time here. Now, if you have no way of playing the game or you have no pen, um, intention of doing the code and following along, raise your hand as well so they're not waiting for you that you never plan to do. Yes, Aaron, I would love for you to follow along.
All right, coming back there quick. I'm also a school teacher as everybody else is here. I'm taking care of something. Do you have to follow along because I'm on my phone? No, you don't have to. It's just a good idea. Rage, leave your hands up so I know once everybody's done it. So like I show about, I don't know, half the people haven't even done it. So I don't know if to wait until I see the hands go up. I don't know if to wait or not. So I'm going to give that enough time. All I really want you to see is we break this down to events. The first one gives a flag. You can always remember it there. It moves it down. You've got, let's go back up here. You have motion. You have looks, even though it says say it's motion, it's because of what you can see it. You've got sound. We're really not going to do a lot of sound. You've got events. That's the first one, but it can be when your space bar is pressed, when the background switches. And we'll get to background in that in a moment. And then these are controlling loops that if you've done any program at all, you probably would recommend recognize those. And then if you have microcontrollers or mouse pen, or you can use this here. So it can look for different things that are attached on there. And then you can do math operators. You can have variables and lists. So Scratch is full-blown. Scratch was developed by MIT. Harvard freshman programming students use it. Trust me, uh, kids, we use Scratch. We use it in the high school as an introductory part. All right. At my school, we or at language agnostic. What that means is we think programming languages, we really don't aren't all that wound up, whether it's Python, C C plus plus, whatever it is, R, whatever it is, uh, we figure the logic is the same. So one of the very fundamental concepts in program is sequence. The order matters. So or kitty cat, we can also do something here. You saw the cat, we saw the image, so let me show you on this screen. There's his X and Y location. There's his size. There's his directions, 90 grades. And you have backgrounds. You can add different backgrounds to the stage. Here's the cat right there. And you can edit. You can upload backgrounds. So if I wanted to, I could go up offline and do that. I really don't want to do that. Okay. You can draw. You can paint. There's a funky background to the cat. So those are backgrounds as opposed to sprites. Sprites are these. Now, let me move some of the stuff out of here. We can zoom in. If you hit that arrow out here, it goes real big for you. This is kind of where we are now. That's even smaller. But this lists all the sprites, backgrounds, age. Let's go ahead here. And that's, if you hit that, that adds surprises. That just puts things on there. We're going to go ahead and top, which is kind of fun, I guess. All right. Now, let's go ahead. Say we got our cat. Let's, let's switch the cat around a little bit more. So I've got the costume. And, you know, we can. if I want to get rid of all this stuff, I'll just put it over there. I don't know about you, but it gets tiring. Just keep kidding, click. So we can do what's called a loop. And what a loop is, is I can say, hey, repeat this 10, 100 times. And watch what our cat does. He just moves across. 10 times times 10, that's 100 times. Go ahead and try that for a second. I'll look at questions, too. How do we get a copy of assignment from, like, two? No, I can't give that to you, Debbie. Everybody ask it. I don't have that many. We may have to reuse some of it. I think the best way to practice is for you to come up with a game and have the kids try to make it. Would be my advice.
Raise your hand once you've done that so we can go on. Once they know enough of you did it, it looks pretty good, but we still have some more. Raise it, raise it up so we can keep going. This is a repeat loop. All right. By the way, while we're repeating that, I'm going to just go, there's all these backgrounds you can use. So they provide plenty. All right. Now. Can I do scratch and watch this on mobile? Sure. Are they going to give different genres in the competition? I'm not sure what you mean by different genres. It's going to be different kinds of games, yes. All right. Yeah, it depends. It'll be different games. It won't be the same game. All right, so now... I'm answering game question, which is great, but now let me show you another programming part. I'm going to go ahead and shrink everybody's hands down. I put everybody's hands down now, but ultimately, I still, even if it does it 100 steps, I still got to keep clicking this flag, and I just want the cat to go back and forth. So I can do this. I can get rid of repeat, and you can think forever. Wow. Now, ask yourself before I press the go button what you think is going to happen. Teachers, great way to teach kids to see if they understand what they're doing. Students, as you're programming, write a bit of code. You in the back of your mind should say, it should do this. So it should do A. But then if it does B, you know you don't really understand it. If it does do A, then A, you're on your way to understanding. Wow, there's a cat. And he just keeps running forward. It's going on forever. See that? Forever move, forever. I can even do it up here. Grab his little cat tail. Well, it doesn't want to do it, but we'll pull it over here. Funny on the full screen, it doesn't recognize him. Huh. All right. Well, guess what? That's great, but I'm getting tired of this cat running away from us. So I'm going to grab his tail, bring him out here. I'm going to add another command. By the way, this is the only Boolean command in the move. Boolean is, if this is true, do this. Test two things. If it's true, do this or do something else. So here it is. If on edge, bounce. Watch what happens now. All right, we've got that. Let's stop now. I've got my cat. If it is on the edge, it bounces. All right, so we have a cat that can go back and forth, up and down. But you know what we really have now are basically, When, hell, when I click, it's going to say hello. It's going to go forever. When it hits the edge, it's going to bounce. Watch what it does. It says hello. Bounces back and forth. Now watch when I switch it. It keeps moving every 10 steps and it says hello.
All right. So my point is, it's order, and what you also to the minute you pull the code off, it manually updates. What's great about this is you can teach. There's three fundamental things to almost all programming language: sequence, looping, forever loops or for next loops. All right, and um, Boolean logic. If this is true, do that. That goes a long way in programming right there. That bit of information in Scratch does all that and more. Okay? Any questions? Raise your hand. All right. Uh, Geo, or I'm not sure, but I'm, you're on a phone. I can't talk to you there. Okay. Let me look down here. When you're through this part, can you tell me if this will be available to watch when it's over? I may need to go back and work on practice events with my students. Absolutely. I will tell you what. I will sit here and make sure it reloads tonight so I can get it posted back up in the Science Olympiad. What I am finding is I can't send anything from my Google Drive. Almost all of, It's all getting uh, caught in spam filters. I hope that makes sense. So we'll record it. We'll, up. we'll be set then. All right. Now, let's talk, let's do a new one. I'm going to file, new, say OK. This time, I'm since I can make a cat bounce around, I'm going to look for a ball. So I'm going to go down a little sprite icon here. You can do a surprise. You choose a sample sprite. Let's find one. I'm going to use a basketball. All right, there's my basketball. There's my cat. I want to make sure if I want code that impacts the basket, the cat, I need to write it now. If I want to impact the basketball, there it is. So let's get our basketball right now, everybody. Try to get your basketball to move. We've known enough now. Get it to bounce off the walls. I don't care which way it falls. Give everybody a moment or two, and then I'll do it, and we'll be all set. Again, the best way to practice is have the kids make games, and don't just do a, you know, this a pong game. There's lots and lots of games on Scratch out there. All right, so I'm going to take. My ball here. Well, I know how to start it. Use when I start that. Then I know in the basketball because it's coded right here where I'm writing this code. That's why I know it'll work. When I collect this bit of code, it's going to go forever. I'm going to go to motion because I want the ball to move. And, of course, if the ball moves, I want it to, if on edge, bounce. And here's my ball. All right. Let me go ahead and see where we've got her. Raise your hand if you got the ball to move. Remember, I'm just showing the basics here, folks. You're going to be have, you'll be able to do this. You'll get some points, but you're going to have to be able to do more than this. Best way to do is practice tutorials. Okay, let's see how many questions I'm trying to. How do you get the basketball to move randomly? I'll show you that in a minute. 
Let's go up here to raise your hand if you got the ball going sideways. I got about half the people. I'm hoping the other people it's not because of phones, whatever. Okay. The only problem right now is, to be honest with you, the ball's going sideways. We want it to go up and down. If I click on cat. Just be careful because I click on cat. Oh, there's no code there. But if I click on the ball, it's there. Remember, this is talking about the ball going up and down. So what we need to do, figure out the direction. And straight up and down, I'm going to select that. Point direction, pull that arrow to get to 180. There's a the ball bouncing up and down. All right, now. I think we're set. Anybody got any questions? I'm kind of going a little, just taking it a little easier here. Let's see what we got. All right, now. Here's my basketball. But what would be really cool on something like this is if I could bounce the ball. So I'm going to insert another sprite. I go down with little kitty cat faces. And I'm looking for animal, people, dance, music, sports, food, fashion, letters. Let's go look at this. And, you know, I can use... Whatever. I'm going to look for something flat because it lends itself well to bouncing up and down. But I could use, you know, a panther and use whatever I want. So in that case, I'm going to do button two and just make it bigger. All right. Now, we can start doing things with this button, for example. So we're going to get to this sprite. It's called button two. We'll call it button right now just for actually you know so we're gonna hit the button and what we're gonna do is when the ball hits that button we want it to bounce right now it's bouncing behind like the button has no impact on that ball okay so let's look at the ball let's stop it let's look at the code on the ball point direction 180 forever once it's in that loop move 10 steps on edge bounce now you can do something like this You can put an if then statement that goes right here. If touch button. If I had to touch button, then I want to point in direction zero. So we go blue up here again. All right. You could, you know, you could actually go up and do a random order to randomize that if you want. Let's just go straight up. All right. Let's watch it now. We'll put our button underneath it, see if it works. And it does. The ball is hitting the button, and it works. And you can get all clever with this if you want. You were someone was asking about random number, making a random. Well, if you're touching the ball, it's pointing in direction zero. You can do things like this. Let me get it over here. Right now, it's going in zero. Now we're going to go zero to 90 degrees. See now how the ball immediately started going in a different direction. See, I'm just going to 
But the problem is, of course, we can't control the button. And what's this cat doing in here? So if you've got a sprite you don't want, you just go to the sprite down here and hit the trash can. Notice there was no code. There's just code in the button and the ball. Well, really no code in the button. All right. Let me see. How many of you have been able to get the ball overhead off the button? Raise your hand if you did it. Now it's really gone crazy. Boom. All right. Let me see what questions we have here. All right. Now, we have that. Let's control this button. So we're going to double click on that. We're going to go to button here. So now we're right there. I just want you to see it's button there. So we're going to write code for that. If you notice, there's no code here. All right. We're going to say, First thing, what do we need? We need an event, right? There it is. There's an event. Then we're going to do a loop. Well, this event, excuse me, variables, variables. What am I, what am I doing here? After. You don't need to go to variables quite yet. So when it's pressed, do this and ask yourself a question. This is the button itself. We're going to use another Boolean logic. I'm going to do one to move it to the right. You're going to do one to move it to the left. So sensing again. All right. Let me get Key paste pressed, we're going to say the right arrow. All right. If I touch the right arrow, move 10 steps. All right. So let's run it. See, I now can move the button to the right, and the ball, we're starting to have a pong game. It's randomly hitting off that. Fortunately, I can't move to the left. Make it move to the left, everyone. Make it move to the left. Make the button move to the left. Raise your hand when you have this working. I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Raise your once you have this working. Good job. All right. We've got a lot of people got it going, so we're going to keep going. Any questions? If not, we're going to go on to the next step of this. So right now, if I move this guy over here. Let's stop it here. Let me see if it'll let me do it now. No, it's interesting. Here I can. So I'm going to move it here, and it just moves to the left. What would you do if you press the left arrow? How would you get it to move to the left? Note, remember, X is along this axis, Y is up and down. All the reason you got trigonometry because we make great video games. So I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Then tell me when you get the uh, left arrow key working because I'm going to hold off until for a few minutes and let you do that. I can't hold off for a whole long. I'm going to get on to other topics.
<laughs> Come on, folks. I'll give you a few more minutes. It's ten. It's four forty-one now. I'll give you a couple more minutes. Can't you put change instead of change by X by 10? You absolutely, great question. Could I do this in another way? A lot of times in programming you can. This works just as well. All right. And then, so let's see where we're going with this. If I do that, yes, I can move it to the right. Let me pull this down here. I'll pull this over here so I can and go to the right. What I can do to the left is now I get another I get another if then statement. Grab that. We're gonna sense again. I bet you pretty much can guess what this is gonna be. Left arrow, press then change, and we'll go. We'll go with this time. We'll go with X again. It's moving along the X axis. Now, when we play the game, I actually have a game now. And there it goes. Now notice, the ball has one, one set of code. There it is, and it's pointing direction. If you touch the buttons, it does these things. The button has its own set of code. But they're all turned on by similar events. When that green flag's flick. All right, I'm gonna put everybody's hands down. Raise your hand if you're able to get it both the left and right arrow. Raise your hands. We've got a few of you. Do we have any questions? I can help you down there. How do you make the ball go faster each time it hits the button? Well, that's the kind of thing. What I would suggest, you keep playing and trying. Folks, if you wait for me to tell you, you're not necessarily learning. So I'm glad to help in this situation. We try to figure this out. Look at other people's games that are doing it. Here's the thing we've got is we got change by 10 or negative 10, right? Well, it's a great question because what I'm going to do is go up and put a variable in there. All right. So let's look at, we'll go down here and we'll see where are the variables. Ah, there's a variable. Make a variable. And so you can set my variable to zero, change my variable by one, etc. List is an array. You can make your own custom blocks. All right, if I click make a variable name, so for all sprites, I'm going to call this one 
Ball speed. Notice I'm going to name it something that makes sense to me. Ball speed. Say okay. So there's ball speed right there. When I click the game, I'm going to set my ball speed to 10. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm in, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I'm just, I'm in the wrong thing to set the ball speed. Let me go over here. So I'll come back to this in a minute. What I want to be is over in basketball. So when it starts going, I'm going to say set ball speed to five. And then instead of moving 10 steps, I'm going to move. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to change. change y by ball speed. Let me go down and get my variable. So now I'm changing that by ball speed. So Change Y by ball speed. It can go back and up. It could be, um, I could also move by, you know, you could also do it this way. See, now if it's just Y, the problem with doing just Y is that X won't ever change. You don't get the variability. So what we'll do is uh, now I look at this, I'd rather do it this way. I'm going to go back to move again. There. Again, move is fine that way. So. Move by ball speed. You could do Y, but the ball would just change in the Y direction. It would change in the X direction. All right? Now, go back to our button here. This is a, I'm glad it was a great question you asked because this is a very cool thing to do. Let's go to button. Change X. If right arrow, change X. Left arrow, Y. Correct? So we don't necessarily want the button to go slower. We could make it start going slower if you wanted to make it hard. But going back to this button up here, if touching the ball, point in this direction, move ball speed steps. We can add another command in here right now. If it touches, all right, so you can go right into this. Change ball speed by one. And you could, and you could actually say by two if you wanted to. You can make that a variable. So now watch when we play the game. Go up here. Nice and easy. And actually it's showing my ball speed here in a minute. It's pretty crazy. Notice too, it goes up really quickly because there's no pause before it does it again. Now it's up to 37, that's just craziness. All right. That was a lot there, any question about that? See how we're using a variable? See how we could, and then what you could do is make ball speed on the paddles over here, which makes the paddle actually harder to play on, because now it'll start racing back and forth. So there's nothing, you can make this ball speed here, ball speed there. You can make it uh, ball speed less something. All right. All right. You can make it. You could do that. Minus two. So you can do all kinds of funky things. I, I'm going to purposely leave it so one. Look how slow that goes. Oh my gosh. I need to make that, by the way, negative two.
you know what? I'm not sure I can do that because what happens there is it would have to be, to get it negative, it'd have to be negative 10. So that may not work really well. Let's move this over here. I'm trying to. Uh, that's still not going great. Bag that idea. That was not one of my better ones. We'll go back up to it. We'll leave it right there. This is what we were doing before. And of course, if you wanted to, one last thing, then we'll go back up here. Uh, sorry. Go to ball speed. Go to ball here. You could make the ball speed a random number. It's 0 to 90. You could sit there and change the ball speed. So you could make the ball speed uh, something like this. Let's get um, pick random. The throw everybody, you can make it 5 to 15. So you don't really ever know if it's going to come. So that's nice and slow. But it's also, well, that's moving 5 to 15 steps. Ball speed would be my bad. Do it this way. Let me show you that real quick. Sorry, real quick. Go here, go ball speed, increase it by a factor of one to five, and go to ball speed. Sorry about that. Whoops. Now it gets pretty crazy. Because we're already up at 50. All right. Oh, lost you there. All right, let's bring it up here. All right, questions on that? Put everybody's hands down. Questions on that? Now, where you have ball speed, we could say also if you hit it, you increase the score by one. You can do this a day. Could you figure out a way to get it where you start out with a set number of 10, and the minute you hit the ball, you miss the ball 10 times? Well, how would I do that? Well, let me show you this real quick. So let's go out here. We're going to add one more sprite. I'm going to move this sprite up a little bit. I'm going to go in and draw and make a new sprite. I can actually what they call paint, which is a fancy way I could draw something in here. I'm going to go ahead and draw it. I'm just going to put it right there and move the whole thing around. Make it a little bit longer this way, longer this way. All right. Now, here's what I can do. I'm going to call this. Miss zone. Miss shot. And what you can say on this is, go back to our code again, go back to the ball. You can do it a couple different ways, but one way you could do it, let's get out of costumes, let's go back to code. Um, let's get rid of that random craziness all right so if you wanted to you could do another if and i'm just giving you a quick question what would you use you'd use another if statement but instead of touching the button you would take touch miss shot and you could either take points against you you could give a score you could slow um, you could, you could actually have that if you touch the button, ball speed doesn't change, you know, you can play with those ball speed. If you miss the shot, you could subtract points up here. You could have another variable score. Here we go. Make a variable. Call that one score. Say, okay. 
We'll put this up so you can see it. We're going to turn my ball speed off. It's not up there, man. We're going to score. When the game sets, we're going to set score to, to 10. All right? And then another thing that comes up here, back to if-then statements, and then we'll go through this, kind of going a little quicker. All right, let me do it here. If, let's go ahead. If touching miss shot, then I'm going to go down to my variable. I'm going to go change score by negative one. I know it needs to be scoring on ball speed. So as I do this, it's going to um, do the game. Also, you might want to put a little bit of a weight in, in each one of these so it doesn't double score it. So right here we do something like, watch when we do this. It does it, it'll like, it'll double up the time it scores. Watch when we start playing sometimes. So I've got this going. So if I miss it, well, it didn't change the score there, so I've done something wrong here. Touching miss shot. Okay, for some reason my score is not changing, and I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I think I know why. The if statement is outside. This if statement needs to be here. See how it's changing the score now? All right, great. Let's stop. And let's stop increasing this button by some crazy. Just crazy the ball speed. By um, set ball speed to five, change ball speed by one. Let's try it now. See, now if I hit it, oops. See why it goes down more than one? It goes like five. And the reason it is because when the ball, the computer is so fast, it measures it. When it hits the purple, it just measured it six times. Now, one way we can fix that is adding a little wait command to say, hold on, don't do that. And so we'll do that right up here. And I'm going to change if touching the ball. Let's go over here. Pick a direction. Let me see. Uh, miss, let me see. What are we going to do? Change score by one. So we're going to put like a little point second in here. So that way, before it changes the score, it'll have a chance not to score 5,000 times. Now, we may have to play with the time a little bit on that. Let's go back up here. Random event. See, I hit that four before. And of course, let me miss it once. Now, see, it's slowing down. It's actually going the opposite of what we want. Let's do this. Play with that a little bit. There we go. All right. Play with that a little bit. I'll post a later for a better solution for that. Okay. Let me go back here, folks. I'm sure there's questions. I kept going. I got this like a rabbit hole for me. Keep playing with it. All right. Do we have any questions here, everybody? All right. All right, Ben Cat. I'm going to ask you your question. Ben Cat, what can I, uh, what can I uh, answer? answer. I'm going to go ahead and mute you. You can hear me. Let's go back here. How'd you miss go each time you press the button? Like we just played with a bunch of difference. The one thing we got to pause is the score, and I've got my timing wrong on that. I've played with that a little bit. We can make it so the score won't. 
it won't score more than once. If you hit that zone, you want it just to change score once until you miss it again. My timing's wrong there. All right, what else? Anybody else have a question? I can't be that. Folks, I just covered a lot there. Any questions? Ben, uh, I mean, I'll mute you right now, Venkat. You tell me how to pronounce your name, sir. Hello, Venkat. Venkat. Ramon. Okay. I'm muting you too. Anybody? No problem. Any other questions? Oh, okay, Mike, where can I find the rubric? You're not going to get a rubric until, until the day of the game. All right? We're not making a game for the contest. There is no game. What you do is you see the game, we tell you the steps, and you try to make it. All right? I hope that helps. Any other questions? All right, let me ask you this. Well, how was my how was my pacing on this one? If you answer it really quick, I appreciate it. All right. The other folks should vote. We only have 68% voted. Let's get some more votes in there. 79% voted. It's going three times. Going two times. Going one time. Close the poll. Share results. Always do. 73% said just right. 7% said it's too slow. 20% said too fast. I'll make sure I go slow it down a little bit. There were some complicated things we got right in there at the end. This whole adding a variable and then worrying about so you don't see, you know, adding some of this stuff in there was a little bit more complicated the very first time if you've not done this before. The best way to do is practice and make your own game as we get into this. All right. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to start. First of all, I have a handout. You can follow this handout. You download it, and you can pull it up, and it'll walk you through um, making a pong game. Very slowly, it shows you different parts of, of this, if you want to go through that. Um, the next time, we'll do some more advanced features of this, and we'll just keep hitting it over and over again so people have questions you can do it all right i will try to email you on things the issue gets to be my email gets caught up in most people's spams what's the youtube channel called well it'll be through, it'll be through go to webinar nc state since you're on the webinar you'll get a notification that's been loaded i will also load it up on mine it'll be young engineers of today all right so it'll be both places it will not go out though till late tonight. Oh, I won't be able to touch this until after seven. I've got to work with some students here in a minute. All right. Well, you all have a great evening. I'm really glad you're doing Science Olympiad and you're learning coding. Okay, all. Take care. Oh, you can you send out the. No, I cannot, Chris, sorry, a lot of people ask for that. I won't send out games because um, we may have to use Flappy Wolf someday. I really don't have that many games, if that makes sense. I maybe could send out the beginning of it so you could see what it is, but I really don't want to send it out. Ah, Boo NC State, what are you, a Carolina fan? Got to figure out what that was about. Uh, thanks, thanks. All right. Anyways, you're all welcome. You're all good. We'll keep playing this. Use my handouts. And um, one, 
I wonder if there's ever a time we should do this in the school day so you could have your classes sit in on this. Tell me if you think that's a good idea. If you would ever want me to do this during its time or school where kids could watch this in class. Oh, Alan's definitely a Tar Heel. Okay. Well, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. I said, Petra says, yes, I'm assuming we'd like me to do it during a class time. If we could figure out a time when kids could be there. Let me work and think about that. All right. Okay, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.